For many years, human beings thought that the Earth was flat, since it appeared to them to be an immense place without an end, a place whose surface disappeared into the horizon, continuing on into infinity. Almost 2,300 years ago, a very ingenious man who went by the name of Eratosthenes had a brilliant idea. Although he was almost entirely without means, he was able to carry it out and to discover something very valuable. The earth was not an infinite flat plane. It was round. Eratosthenes was born in Cyrene in ancient Greece. He worked as a philosopher, a mathematician, a poet, an astronomer, a storyteller, a geographer, and a theater critic. In addition to all these professions, Eratosthenes also served as the director of the Great Library of Alexandria, where all of the wisdom and knowledge of antiquity was stored. In his leisure time, he often studied the papyrus in the library so as to acquire more and more knowledge about the various fields that he worked in. One day, on a certain papyrus, he came across a legend that intrigued him. <coughs> he read that in Siena, to the south of Alexandria, Something very strange happened each year on June 21st. It happened that the shadows cast by the temple's columns shrank in size as midday approached. At exactly 12 noon, the shadows completely disappeared. This document indicated that exactly 12 noon each year on June 21st, the sun was positioned exactly above the columns, and for this reason no shadows were cast on the ground. This might seem very obvious to us, but at this time no one had yet taken notice of this. Eratosthenes wanted to test out this story for himself, so he found a branch and waited until 12 noon on June 21st, which was when the shadows disappeared in Siena. When at last this moment noted in his papyrus had arrived, he observed that in Alexandria the shadow did not completely disappear, as it had in Siena. So he asked himself, How is it that a branch in Siena does not cast a shadow when it does in Alexandria? Oh! If the sun was creating shadows in Siena, but not in Alexandria, it would mean that the ground in Siena was perpendicular to the rays of the sun, but that the ground in Alexandria was at an angle. This meant that the earth could not be flat, as was previously imagined, but rather curved.
Eratosthenes did some mathematical calculations, measuring the shadow that a branch one meter in length in Alexandria, which was three feet, and then finding the angle which was formed by the rays of the sun, which was seven degrees. Then he thought to himself, if I could figure out the distance between Siena and Alexandria, I would prove that the earth was round and I could determine how big it is. Eratosthenes hired a man to travel to Siena and to measure how far it was from Alexandria. This man took his horse and set off to take measurements with the very basic tools that were available to him at that time, which were simply his imagination and his intuition. When he returned, the man said to Eratosthenes that the distance between the two cities was that of 500 stadiums. In ancient times, distances were not measured in miles or kilometers. Rather, a unit of measure was used that was called a stadium. 500 stadiums is equal to 500 miles. <laughs> <laughs> Eratosthenes used his mathematical expertise to calculate the size of the Earth. If 500 miles produced a shadow of 7 degrees and the circumference of the Earth is 360 degrees, then the Earth must have a perimeter of 25,480 miles and a diameter of 7,450 miles. Eratosthenes was amazed by his discovery. It was one of the most important discoveries ever made, but it contradicted everything that humanity had believed up to that point. The earth was not flat. If he could manage to get people to believe him with this discovery, he would change the way our world was seen. When Eratosthenes told people of his discovery, almost no one believed him. Everyone had observed the Earth, and even when they walked hundreds and hundreds of stadiums, they never reached its end. This was why they continued to be convinced that the Earth was flat. <laughs> Eratosthenes took some people along to a beach and said to them, Do you see that boat sailing away into the sea? First its hull will disappear, then its deck, and finally its masts and sails. It appears that it is sinking, but really, because of the curve of the earth, it is simply disappearing little by little from our sight. Oh. The people were fascinated, but this discovery on its own inspired new questions. If the earth was round, how was it supported? How did it hold itself up if it was floating in the middle of nothing? How was it that people living in the southern hemisphere did not fall off? Okay. 
Eratosthenes did not provide answers to all these questions, nor did anybody have them in the following centuries. Many years passed, and numerous important researchers and scientists made contributions so that answers could be provided to the great questions of humanity. In this way, thanks to great thinkers such as Eratosthenes, Galileo, Kepler, Newton, and Einstein, and all of their research, humanity has continued over time to get answers to these great questions. Today, we remember these thinkers as great geniuses who have helped in a tremendous way to increase our knowledge of the universe we live in.